There's a lot going on in our range of awareness. Someone once called it a big buzzing confusion. Input through your ears, different sensations in your body, and whole worlds of thought. And the trick in meditation is to just take one level of sensation and stick with it, hang on to it. It's like watching something floating on the water. Even though the waves may go up and down, you keep your eyesight focused on that object, like a buoy or whatever. No matter what else is going on in terms of currents coming past, or the waves, or the wind, or other things, you keep your eyes focused just on that one spot. And you find that it's tranquilizing, even more so when you're meditating on the body, on meditating on the breath. The breath is always coming in and going out. Even when it's not coming in and going out, there's a kind of a buzzing energy throughout the whole body. That's the potential that allows the breath to come in and go out. That counts as breath energy as well. Even though it's still, there's still a kind of, a, of energy there. And when we're meditating, we want to keep our attention focused just on that one level, no matter what else is happening. The pattern of light that the candle flame shines on your eyelids, the sounds in the background, the sounds of the Dharma talk, just leave those in the background. You don't have to shut them off, but you don't want to shift your focus to them. Keep your focus right here on the breath. You can choose any spot in the body where it's easy to see now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. And try to maintain that spot with a sense of relaxation. Don't tighten up the spot. Allow it to relax and then take that relaxed feeling as your standard. That's what you want to hold on. Well, that's what you want to keep tabs up. Don't You don't have to hold on in the sense of grasping it or anything, because when you grasp it, that tightens it up again. But just. Keep tabs on it. Keep your finger on it. Watch as things come in, go out, but you stay right here. And when the mind goes wandering off to other things, ask it, okay, what are you, what are you doing, looking for? Why are you going out looking to stir up trouble? Because that's what the mind is. It's a troublemaker. It's always wanting to stick its nose into this, stick its nose into that. And there's a time and a place for that. Without that kind of curiosity, there's very little of would have developed in the human race. But at the same time, very little trouble would have developed in the human race, too. But we're not training ourselves to be zombies or to be totally uninterested. We're learning that there's a time and a place to be interested in things, and a time and a place when the mind has to rest. And this is a time and a place to rest. The mind has this tendency when it goes out, it just doesn't go out to look at things that it gets involved. A thought comes stirring into the mind. We don't just leave it at that. We change it. We dress it up. We take it apart. We meddle with it. We really do have meddles in minds. We can't leave good enough alone. And so the attitude you've got to take while you're here right now is that whatever else is happening outside, that's none of your concern. You don't have to get interested in it. You don't have to meddle with it at all. Just let it be. And you stay with the breath. If you're going to meddle with anything, meddle with the breath. Change the rhythm of breathing to see what feels good. You can change the depth of the breath, the pace, the rhythm of the breath. You can change the point that you're focusing on in the body. But as long as you stay on this level, you're fine the level of the, the energy that you've got here in the body. Because when you can do that, it's like having an anchor. It's like being grounded. When the mind goes off into its worlds, thinking about this person, that person, this situation, that situation, it often loses touch with present reality. It goes off into the other world, and its feet come just floating off the ground, and you go drifting away. But you're kind of like a kite 
whose string is cut. Who knows where you're going to go drifting to and where the wind will finally drop you and get tangled in a tree, tangled in electric wires. All sorts of places where you can end up getting tangled, which wasn't your intention to begin with. You were actually looking into something else, but it led step by step by step someplace else that you hadn't expected. And it's all because you don't have your feet firmly planted on the ground. You don't have a grounding. And without this grounding, all your ideas about life, what's good and what's bad, they get all mixed up. What's worthwhile, what's not worthwhile, they all get confused. Because you don't have any grounding. Without any grounding, you don't have any clear reference point for north and south or east or west. You're just blowing around. But when you stay with the breath, the mind has that grounding. And you begin to notice that certain kinds of thoughts come into the mind, and they really do cause a tensing up. They really do cause parts of the mind to shut off from other parts of the mind. The mind's tendency to deceive itself. And it's like when you were a kid and you got a a magazine with pictures you knew you weren't supposed to be looking at, so you went off and you hid under the covers so that nobody would see. Of course, anybody looking in the room, seeing you sitting under the covers in the bed, would realize something was up. But the mind plays that game not only with other people, it plays that game with itself. It starts thinking about certain things, and you know, I really shouldn't be thinking about this, but I want to anyhow. And so you erect barriers around that thought so that you're, what you remember about what you should and shouldn't be doing. gets blocked out. And of course, it doesn't really make it go away. It just compartmentalizes your mind into these different cut-off areas. And as a result, we end up living with a lot of ignorance. And so one of the important things we find when we breathe, stay with the breath, keep tabs with the breath, make sure that no matter what else happens, we're right here with the sensation of breathing, we're right here with the sensation of the breath energy in the body. When you start seeing those walls and those barriers being put up in your mind, you notice it. And you know that it's artificial. You know that it was intended. You know that it's deceitful. And after a while, there comes a point where you say, okay, I've had enough of this. This is not really accomplishing anything at all. These little compartments in the mind. And that way there's less struggle in the mind. There's less divisiveness in your own mind. When you can start getting divisive in your own mind, it's, it's an easy next step to starting getting divisive with other people. But if you learn not to put up these dividing walls, when everything in the mind has to be open and above board, and you see there are certain ways of thinking, certain ways of paying attention you're just ashamed to do. Greed comes and you realize that if you're going to go with the greed, you've got to erect all these barriers that are uncomfortable in the mind. Anger comes. And what so often happens with anger is things get shut down in the mind so that only one course seems open to you, or two courses. Either you're going to let it all out or else you're going to suppress it and bottle it up. And of course, it's obvious that you want to let it all out if you can. And you forget there are lots of other alternatives to what you could be doing and saying. And all those other very unskillful, kind of dishonest emotions we have in the mind. When you're working with your breath, when you're working with the sense of the breathing throughout the whole body, it gets harder and harder to put up those barriers, because you see yourself doing it. So it gets harder to pretend that you're not. This way, when there's more openness and more honesty in the mind, you find that it's a better behaved mind. It causes you less trouble. You're not sticking your nose in business that's not really your own business. You're not meddling with things that you really don't want to meddle with. You find the mind causes itself less and less and less trouble all the time. All because of this ability to be more open with yourself, more open internally. 
And it's not just a mental openness. This is why we work with the breath. So it seeps down into the body as well. All those subconscious roots that give rise to these walls we build up in the mind. They get saturated with the breath and get saturated with knowledge, get saturated with awareness. So the conscious area of the mind gets larger and larger. The unconscious activities get pushed off into smaller and smaller and smaller corners all the time. So it's harder and harder for them to take over. So when we're meditating, it's not a like we're clamping down and shutting things down. It's simply keeping tabs on this one level of awareness, this one level of energy that's here in the body, and allowing it all to connect. But once it's connected, then you find that there are no areas where you can hide from yourself. Now, some people find that scary. They're used to being in denial. But when you learn how to bring some compassion to the whole process, learn how to bring some understanding and maturity and equanimity to the process, you'll find that you're much better off working through these things, because you've got the tools now where you can work through them. You don't have to be overpowered by these things. You're more and more in control. And again, it's not a control freak kind of control. It's a control that comes from real knowledge. The reason we don't like control freaks is they usually have one very narrow view of reality and they're trying to impose that on everything else. But the kind of control that comes through the meditation is a control that comes from a 360-degree vision all around. So everything does get put in its proper place where it really does belong. The thoughts that are important that you really have to think about, well, they become it's clear and clear exactly what you really do have to think about, what you can let go. But for the time being right now, any thought that's not related to the breath, let go. Just let it pass. You don't have to shove it around. You don't have to dress it up. You don't have to look into it. You don't have to be curious about it. Keep your curiosity focused on this one level of energy, the, the breath energy in the body. In the beginning, it may seem like there's not much there to notice. It's just in and out. Or... But there is more. Just start pursuing the whole question of tension and lack of tension, relaxation, throughout the whole body. Look at your posture. Notice how your breathing is affecting your posture, how your posture affects your breathing. Think of the breath coming in and out the body in different parts. Think of your legs doing the breathing. Think of your arms doing the breathing, your hands. In other words, get in touch with this level of breath energy that it's already there in the body, but gets squeezed off so that it doesn't distract us from our thought worlds. Well, now we're turning, the, turning our priorities around. We drop the thought worlds and get more and more interested in this energy here in the body. Let it open up. You open up to it. It opens up as well. And you find that it gives you a, an under, a grounding, a sort of an undertone that permeates everything in your awareness. Saturates the whole body with awareness, so that whatever is going to come up in the mind, it comes up in a field of awareness, rather than springing at you out of the dark. When you learn to be open with yourself in, the, in this way, you find that there's really nothing threatening in there, because you know where it all comes from. You've seen it arise, you see how it passes away. And you realize that no matter what, your range of awareness is larger than it is. But once you get used to this broadened field of awareness, you don't want to let it narrow down ever again. You realize as soon as anger comes, things narrow down. Greed comes. Lust comes. They narrow down. Fear comes. Everything gets narrowed down. It's like having lived in a large house and suddenly being squeezed into a tiny, tiny cell. You 
and you realize you don't have to squeeze yourself in there. It was your choice. When you've got the choice, you want to stay in this more broadened awareness. So try to make this kind of awareness your basic, your basic level, your home, your grounding, the place from which you come. It's always there if you open up to it and develop the skills you need to stay interested here and for the time being just drop your curiosity with everything else. The curiosity that wants to build a thought world out of this sensation or wants to associate that sound with some other sound. Because on the one hand it sounds kind of nice, you can be very creative with your thoughts, but this is not the time and place for that. Keep your curiosity here with a breath. Let the breath permeate the body. And then when this becomes your home, then when thoughts come in, you, they're coming in on your terms. And they can't do anything to you that you don't want them to do. They can't trap you again. Because you see what lies all around them. 